Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to look at incorporating seismic provisions for a beam to column flange moment frame within RAM connection standalone. This will include the process for specifying your seismic provisions criteria, generating your additional seismic load combinations, specifying your joint data to include a reduced beam section, and then finally assigning your connection design. Now within RAM connection standalone, we have three different types of connections that are available for beam to column moment frames to assist with seismic provisions. These would include your moment end plate, a directly welded connection, and also a flange plated connection. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application, where I've already created a beam column flange joint, and the design intent is for this moment resisting joint to resist seismic provisions. Now the first step in your seismic provisions workflow would be to specify your coding information. To do that, we'll select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and select the design code icon. This is where you're going to tell the program which design code you plan on using and whether or not seismic provisions are appropriate. For this exercise, we're going to tell the program to consider seismic provisions and we're gonna set our seismic design category as category D. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. The next step in our workflow is to ensure that the load cases and load combinations are set up for seismic provisions. So let's start by generating our typical load combinations. To do that process, we'll select the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the Generate icon. So the first set of load combinations I'm going to select are according to the ASCE 716 LRFD factored load combinations. Now, if you recall, a few moments ago, I specified an LRFD design standard, and I do wanna make sure that my load combinations are in accordance with the design code I selected. Once I select my design code, I can review the combinations that will be created and then click on the Generate button. Now for this particular model, I also want to generate load combinations for the amplified seismic factored load combinations. So I'm gonna repeat this process one more time when I'm doing seismic provisions. I'm gonna to go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar click on the Generate icon. So here I'm going to find my AISC 34105 LRFD Amplified Seismic Factored Combinations. I do have an opportunity to review this information. You can see the default overstrength factor that will be assigned and then we will click on the Generate button. We'll finish this off by clicking OK. Now, if you wanted to review and modify any of the load combinations that were generated through that process, you can click on the Add and Edit Load Conditions icon, and you can see all of your load combinations that were created. At this point, you could change your factor on your seismic load case if needed. Now the next step in our workflow is to give the joint the information that it needs for performing the moment check or the moment connection for seismic provisions. So at this point, we're gonna edit our joint information. To do that, you're gonna select the joint you're currently working on, go to the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then we're going to click on the Edit icon. Now, if seismic provisions were not selected, several of the parameters here 
will be grayed out. They won't be available until you tell the program that you're working on seismic provisions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my seismic load resisting system. I can choose between a special moment frame, an ordinary moment frame, or an intermediate moment frame. Here I can see the help window will give me some additional information regarding the design checks that will be used depending upon the seismic load resisting system. For this particular exercise, I'm going to select a special moment resisting frame. In addition to that, I also have the seismic design parameters that are now available, including specifying whether this is a reduced beam section. So for this particular model, I'm going to say yes, please design it as a reduced beam connection. And then I'm going to enter the appropriate parameters here to define the geometry. Now, if my loading has already been set up, at this point, I can go ahead and click OK. Now, for this particular exercise, I'm going to be taking a look at the different moment connections that can be specified for seismic provisions. This would include a moment end plate, a directly welded connection, and also a flange plate connection. For this particular exercise, I'm going to go with a directly welded connection. Now this connection type is a moment resisting connection template. And as you can see, I've already assigned a shear connection that has taken care of the shear component of the reaction that's being imposed on this joint. So I'm just working on the moment resisting system at this point. To start this process, I will select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Now the directly welded connection type is available only as a smart connection workflow and it is basically a full penetration weld that will be specified. So I'm going to go to the smart connection workflow, find the moment connection section and select the DW connection type. This indicates a directly welded connection. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click on the assign button and then we're going to see that a moment connection has been assigned. Once I assign the connection, I should be able to see the reduced beam section appear in the main window. So now for this particular joint, I do have a moment and shear reaction imposed upon it, and I can see that a moment connection and shear connection have been assigned. Now before I assign the moment connection, I did notice in the joint selection area that the shear connection was passing all code checks without any warnings. So for this exercise, I do know that the moment connection is what's producing the failure at this point. So I'm going to go to the connection pad to review the information on this connection and make some changes as needed. To do that, I'm going to click on the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon and I'm going to edit my moment connection. Once in the connection pad, the first place I like to do when I have an error or warning on a connection design is visit the connection report. This will give me a good information on where the failures happened and it'll help me zero in on the parameters that need to be adjusting. Here I can see that panel web shear and local web yielding were an issue. So let's go ahead and close out of the connection report. Now at this point, I can make some decisions about how I want to adjust this connection to get to a passing condition. Now, if I'm able to, I might consider adjusting my beam sections or column sections. What I'm going to notice is that for those particular types of parameters, I do have a blue arrow adjacent to them. What that means is that this parameter was defined in another area of the program, specifically within the joint data. If you want to make any changes to anything with a blue arrow adjacent to it, you should really visit that information either in the code information or the joint data and make the change official. Anything without a blue arrow, however, 
can be adjusted in the connection pad and saved to your connection design. For this particular exercise, I'm going to try either adding transverse stiffeners or web panel zone stiffeners or possibly both. I'm going to start with transverse stiffeners. Now I can add them at the top flange of the beam, the bottom flange of the beam, or both. I'm going to try to detail them in both areas. And I'm going to ask the program to consider full depth stiffeners. In addition to that, I'm going to take a look at any other parameters I think I might want to modify. And for this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and change the thickness of the stiffener and the stiffener width. I'm also going to adjust the weld type to be a full penetration weld. Now that didn't quite get me to a passing connection design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the column web panel zone stiffeners as well. Now I can create a doubler plate, which would basically be a plate welded to the column. I could see that got me to a passing connection design. Or I can also go with a diagonal stiffener, depending upon which one kind of works for me. I'm going to go with a doubler plate. And just by making that change, I can see that my interaction ratio is now less than 1.0. It is in green, meaning that it did pass the connection check. Now, I made some adjustments to the stiffeners and the column web panel zone stiffeners. And if I want that information saved, let's go ahead and click on the save icon here. And then the last thing I can do in the connection pad is review the DXF drawing. From here, I can review the drawing information and I can also export the DXF. At this point, I'm going to keep all the changes I made and exit out of the connection pad. We should be able to see the reinforcing information that I added uh, appear on your main view window and I should be able to see the new status of the connection design appear in the joint selection area. So this concludes my workflow for assigning a moment connection to a joint and RAM connection standalone for seismic provisions. This included the process of setting up your coding information appropriately, ensuring you had the appropriate load combinations, specifying your frame type through your joint data, and then assigning a moment connection that is pre-approved for seismic provisions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.